Captain's Log, Stardate 192.168.1019. I have been on this planet for a very, very long time now, kept sane by my dancing partner here, my science officer ZTech. How are you doing, buddy? I must say, Captain, we're creepily in sync. It's good, it's good. We gotta get a little boom chicka ba boom chicka ba boom chicka ba Yeah, anyway. <laughs> As you can tell, we have been here for a very... Oh, I, I, I totally went and messed it up now. <laughs> uh, we, we have been here for a long time, but we have been working on making our way through the electronic ages. We started off burning coal. And I suppose technically we're still burning coal, but much like the world governments, we will uh, under-report that and uh, start making way onto our green technology, because I believe you want to start making some solar panels. Yes. All right, um, yeah, oh. some solar panels, batteries, large area consumption of electricity and all that. So, so yeah, let's call it solar panels and associated infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to the end of the bus then, surely. Well, of course. Oh, of course. I mean, where else are we going to build a brand new set of machinery? Um, I've been also wondering... Yes. Uh, I, I am your that, captain. <laughs> what did you say that this planet is missing radio? As uh, in radio stations. There, there does appear to be a, a shocking lack of anything going on. I mean, we, we have seen evidence. Let's see if I can... Oh, wow, they're close to the wall. We have seen le evidence of uh, inter uh, intelligent species around here. So why aren't they communicating? I, I don't trust them. I do not trust them in the slightest. Obviously, they're using technologies beyond the ken that we are used to. And I've got to be honest, talking of the technology that we're used to, I miss technology. We've been on this planet for so, so long now. Uh, I've forgotten what it is to have the simple pleasure of walking around uh, either the holodeck or having the machine, uh, having the, the, the ship process my senses for me and transport me virtually of course to any of the great sites that we used to to love from from back home wherever well, back home is so what do, would you miss the most from what do i miss the most i miss wingsuiting through io i downloaded this app to my my interaction device uh before we left uh port before we left port <laughs> yes uh, and it was uh, showing all the extreme environments of the solar system. Because as you know, I am a, a, an old Earth nut. I am uh, very, very interested in how the Homo sapiens of old uh, used to spend their time. Uh, and they had this, this really clunky thing called virtual reality ah oh, it was horrible they had to wear these headsets more more large more clunky than the headsets we are currently wearing and ours give us complete interface with the world around us and they all they could do was look and see i mean like uh oh, that's so primitive so primitive that's, that's, i must say that's interesting um okay but what type of scenarios would they appreciate in i guess i mean that's the question i need to go with yeah. our ancestors savages that they were used these virtual virtual reality devices to basically con conduct war upon each other it was it was terrible if you go back through the uh, through the software archives yep that's what i'm going to call them uh if you go back through the software archives, a good 90% of what people were practicing on turns out to be the most horrific of combat games. Hmm. But just combat? Was Re it for practice? Or I, I mean, I assume so. They were giving these games to their very, very young people, uh, teenagers and below, uh, to try and improve the combat skills for their future conscription to the armies. Uh, I, as I we can't believe this actually worked. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I know. I, it, it, was, it was silly. Uh, there, there was also this game that the, uh, the grand crime syndicates brought out uh, to try and instill... Um, a, a, a criminality into the youth of the day. Um, oh my! Uh, and what uh, did the government do about it? I mean, some regulations must have existed. Uh, they put an age limit upon it, which everybody, from what I hear, ignored. Uh, so that 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 was um, a little counterproductive. And as we all know, when any government ends up trying to regulate, the people that you are regulating against 
they they're going to try and do their best to get around this particular regulation. Hmm. Quite interesting. So everyone back then just ignored what the government told them to do. Yes, yes. As as far as the records indicate, uh, there was the the uh, the the laughable system of their police forces at the time, but. Unlike police forces of the day, they were purely reactionary. They could do nothing until the crime was actually committed. I mean, can you imagine such barbarity? Having to wait I, I, until someone was actually... What's the word? I'm not, victimized before anything could happen. I just... I couldn't imagine a society where we let that happen nowadays. So, so you're telling me that no matter if they had access and plans of... A future crime happening they couldn't do anything about it legally? yeah not not until the actual crime had happened it was uh some it was a very well documented shortcoming of the society of the time it was uh very horrific but for some reason they thought that having this uh, now i'm gonna throw an ancient word at you that has no meaning nowadays but they valued something called privacy I, I, I personally, I, I, I have trouble wrapping my, my head around this concept. I mean, why would you want to... Uh, now, it was all about, if I remember correctly, hiding what you were doing from other people. But uh, why would you do that? Wouldn't you increase your own security by sharing your location at any moment? And if something I mean, bad happens to you, everyone could find you. I, I, I agree 100%. Nowadays, I feel comforted by the fact that if I'm in trouble, I can just scream to the overwatching satellites and a uh, police force member will be with me within moments. I find yeah, that very, very satisfying and comforting. Unfortunately, we don't have this here. <laughs> no, well, we have proven many times that this is a, a backwater edge of the universe. That I, I'm honestly not even sure why we were flying around here when we broke, when we, uh, when we crashed. Why were we here? Um... I don't know. It was science your... officer, you, you're, you, we, were, we were here for a science mission, but I can't remember what, what that was. I, I just made sure the ship stayed in orbit. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't stay in orbit. <laughs> I, I, that wasn't on my watch. I was, joy I was enjoying my whiskey time in the, uh, in the engine room, as been previously spoken of. Unfortunately, the, uh, my first mate, the wonderful Captain Riker, uh, yes, but we had two captains on board. That's how important our ship was. Uh, but Captain Riker, unfortunately, was the man who who was on in control of the bridge at the time. And I'm going to stick with uh, in, into my report as as being spoken right now that it was all Captain Riker's fault. It's all his fault. Uh, it, it is okay. all his fault. And and as he is not here to provide counter evidence, I'm a f we're just going to have to accept it as fact. I'm noticing that these are moving very slowly. Because our power is none. Mm, uh, our power is none. Are we? Are we getting coal? Um, Ooh, we are not getting coal. Simply the production is not enough. Oh, are we not getting coal at all? Well, we've got 130k on the coal thing. Yeah, we're we're practically out. Uh you, you know, I was talking of this secret art of making solid oh, fuel yeah. out of the extra extra oil we have. Uh, Maybe now's the time to enact that. We can, we can put solid fuel into a... There is an additional problem of um, our situation, is that we use electricity to mine the power for the electricity production. Mm, I mean, that, that's bound to happen in such a, a, a tight-knit, holistic recycling system such as our own. So, Captain, you say that in the past... People were training for the army using VR. I mean, I, I guess the military would fund something like that. Uh, oh, but it was much more, much more insidious than that. Um, they, 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 it wasn't given over as an actual training program. No one was informed that this is what it, what it was uh, performing, uh, the function uh -huh. it was performing. Uh, they released it as games, if you would believe. You know, much, much like the, the games we, we had on. On, on the ship, like like hopscotch and tennis, but much more aggressive. Aggressive. Yes, aggressive. I know it's a it's a concept that is almost foreign to our to our way of thinking now. But these games were 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 designed for conflict in the most extreme sense. Oh my, we are we, really we are in bad. trouble, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we are literally being powered by a few solar panels I placed somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, we got we got loads of coal up here. We just need to, like, reroute it. Captain. Uh, Science officer. <laughs> could you do me a favor? <laughs> of, of course. Anything to help the smooth running of the ship. Could you add to bit building of the batteries, please? That of would course. involve basically transporting all of the batteries from the top, where you're heading from, to the main belt. And you just want me to put this on the belts? Uh, okay. Well, automating the battery production. Oh, no, but battery production is automated, but accumulators is not. Accumulators. Uh, let's have a look. I am play. Oh, I could do that here. So you see, it was extremely clunk clunky. I mean, I guess as uh, any starting. Uh, Science. Any starting tech? Yes, yeah, yeah. But this thing weighed as much as the person's head, uh, and uh, it was. Uh, some described it as uh, having a baby elephant balanced on your nose, uh, which oh my. to me sounds a little bit. I'm not sure I could put up with that for that long. Um, and the uh, the the reports of it making people feel ill because of the realism. Uh, it's, I, I assume that is slightly over exaggerated, but. Uh, who, who knows? What isn't this sulfur producing sulfur? Uh, but might be oh, electricity, up. of course. My bad. Here's the thing, Captain. Would you say that um, the age of basically electricity, when we got to it, is the most important thing that humanity has ever made? I don't think so much it's electricity, but the fact that the electricity opened us up to the informational content of the universe. I think that is the most important thing we've ever been ever done, uh, is, is having the computational power to think about things from a purely analytical point of view. Unfortunately, not having science training, I can't go into it much more than that, but my mm. mentor told me that that was the most important thing, and as a captain, I believe everything my mentor said with an absolute certainty that you will n not find in any other walk of life, because no one is as certain as a captain. <laughs> no one is as certain as a captain. Building randomly just causes infrastructure to be, you know, useless in a few years, wouldn't you say? A, 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 a well-known law of entropy, uh, the, the, the entropy of infrastructure, the, the great and varied mathematics that go into it are well be- Ah, oh, I hate it when I do yes, that. <laughs> I, I uh, went, went to copy-paste and just pasted over the top. There we go. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the well-known laws of infrastructure decay, um, thought to originally be merely engineering, but actually is now a uh, deep law of the universe. If you build a road, you must maintain. Of course. Who, who knew that such a simple law would come from the, uh, the very quarks from which we are born? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six accumulators in that position. Okay, starting to... I'm starting the assembly. Um, uh, it could be great. I'm gonna place down a chest. <laughs> I know this might sound a little bit bad, but uh, could, yes. could you build... Uh, uh, could you bring me the built, uh, basically, parts here so I can continue building? For the accumulators? Yeah, accumulators and solar panels. Okay, okay, I shall run some stuff around for you. Oh, plastic is ground to a halt. Because we have no power. power. I, uh, may I suggest starting cut, cutting um, unimportant sectors? Probably cut the radar, and we can cut the uh, outposts, definitely. Yeah. So, Captain, uh, what is the one influential uh, entertainment system that you like from the ship the the one that i prefer was is the, the the field projections when the the ship uses its force field influence to uh shape the thoughts that i'm having to make sure that uh i am only experiencing the the the, the experience that that's that's what we call them nowadays is the experience um so that i may lie in my bed uh, and yeah. the whole world shuts off to me. Uh, my, it, it's like I go to sleep and start dreaming. But of course, the uh, the spaceship has a pre-programmed set of quantum patterns that it uh, conforms my brain to to uh, make me believe that I am living the experience of the uh, the, the brave IO adventurer. Was obviously my my favourite one, as I as I say. Um, there's nothing quite like hang gliding through the volcanic plumes of the most most volcanic system, uh, most volcanic body in the solar system. 
It uh, really makes you feel alive whilst you sleep. <laughs> I, I get that, I guess. Um, so, adventurous types of uh, adventurous, I guess. Well, as a captain, I am solely responsible for keeping the uh, level of adventure on the ship high. I need to make it, make sure that people uh, really feel like we're doing great work there. Okay, I think everything is almost powered to the, the best ability we have. Yeah, we definitely uh, need to try and figure out a better coal source, though. The problem is, even if we started converting heavy oil and light oil into fuel sources, that again requires energy to do. So it let's does. just redirect this. Nice. Some boost to our power problem, I guess. Because eco friendly. I mean, I mean yeah. I, that that is the thing I love most about solar panels is they're just so good for the environment. I can't think of a better way of repaying to the land around here than putting down this massive solar panel farm. I mean, we just need to clear out the wildlife, the uh, trees. I mean, th who gave them the permit to build here? I mean, I mean, how are they even making power? How do they help uh, us? No, I mean, it's completely useless. It's just. Different colors of trees, making stumps that we now need to clear out. I mean, don't they on. know we're trying to save the planet here? Completely insensitive. Completely. We came here, we crashed here, and as would, would be, are we now refugees trying to basically build ourselves a new home? We are. We are just refugees, and I hear the bureaucracy on this planet is quite excessive. That's why these uh, these visitors keep coming. Oh, I can't walk between the solar panels. Lol. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's why the uh, the visitors around the outside keep keep calling on us. Uh, I do keep saying, no, it's okay. We're we're not from round here. We'll we'll be on our way as soon as we can. But they they keep talking about tax forms and uh, asset recovery or something. I, I'm not really sure. It sounds it sounds like something that only really locals have to worry about. Yeah, and it, it does. I mean, it, it's that's why we built a wall around us. I mean, just to keep them out, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, like we can't we can't let them in in their wholly justifiable ignorance get in the way of the great work we're doing for this planet. We're bringing infrastructure. Tearing down trees that are just in the way. How many times you walk through that forest and hit your head on the tree? Oh, more than I could count. I, I have got lost in, in many of these forests many, many times. It's a, it's a hazard. It's, it's, we, it's... we should actually put a pathway in, a nice stone brick pathway. I think they'd appreciate that. Yeah, uh, we, we are producing a lot of stone, so you can probably do that. Oh, I just noticed something in the research. Yeah. I completely forgot about it. Explosives. Ooh. Oh, have we not done explosives yet? But how how will we make tank shells if we can't make explosives? Uh, I was more interested in the landmines. I, I think they have a long term effectiveness. <laughs> they they definitely have a staying power that is missing from any other type of um, native dissuasion techniques. Honestly, I think if we could somehow combine the ability of an artillery shell and tank and uh, landmines, that would be perfect. Because yeah, we just need some sort of shell that uh, fragments into, uh, let's say, hundreds of thousands of pieces, which bury themselves down into the ground, all having a pressure switch on them. Yeah, yeah. This this sounds highly, highly efficient. Yeah, I mean, it it removes the necessity of us actually leaving the base and covering them by hand. Yeah, as we all know, like, the whole purpose of our technology is to stop us having to leave our base. So adventure type games, Captain. Um, so your favourite would be flying across Titan, as you said, right? Uh, Io. Io. The, Io. the, the uh, intricacies of flying between uh, volcanic plumes really, really, really speaks to me as a captain. And do you have any knowledge of what type of... Uh, so you said combat-based training that the uh, previous generations, I must say, had. Yeah, yeah, it was real, real uh, patriotic stuff. Uh, it's always speaking of duties and uh, calling on your brothers and stuff like that. It was a very, very weird time. Uh, some might say almost Spartan in the outlook. I've done this wrong. Spartan? <laughs> Ah oh, yes, the, the the ancient ancient Egyptians. You you see Egypt. That that reminds me of the pyramids, right? I mean, that were melted down for 
Granite? Is it granite? They were they were melted down for their granite content back mm. back, at, back in the times of the the Great Unstoning, when uh, the vast majority of the world's stone supplies were stolen by the Vargals, um, the the well known oh. stone international stone th- uh, sorry interstellar stone thieves. Uh, they started off by stealing the moon uh, as as you do. It's the obvious choice. Um, unfortunately, I've done this wrong um, um for, fortunately for the citizens of earth fortunately for the citizens of earth uh, someone noticed rather quickly when the moon disappeared one night um and called the interstellar police i'm, I'm gonna make this work well i must say it must <laughs> it must be hard to notice when the chinese have built a moon shine upon their cities i think that was one of the biggest biggest cons- uh, projects that china had as uh well, they were communists still, of course. Indeed, yes, there, there was uh, talk of building moons. Unfortunately, um, ancient propaganda tell us that this was in fact no moon, but a uh, fully armed and operational battle station. Hmm. Uh, ancient propaganda, you say? Uh, what so, uh, who was the... I mean, who were they fighting if it was propaganda? Uh, so, uh, the, the great tribe of Lucas... Uh, we, we don't know much about them, unfortunately. They, they were uh, te- led by a giant mouse, I believe, uh, going by the ancient texts. Gi- giant mice existed? A, a giant mouse, yeah. Uh, it was actually one of the, uh, the great media conglomerates of the time. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Captain. I do need to ask, is it mice or mouse? <laughs> giant mouse or mice? Uh, giant mouse, sing- singular. Mouse. Sorry. That, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I need to figure out how to jump this over there. Okay, genius, done it. <laughs> Took me a while. <laughs> Ancient texts talk of uh, talk of the mouse that ran the media conglomerates uh, in the time. Uh, a crazy time. The the mouse had a, an unnaturally long lifespan. Uh, the the records talk of it living for at least five hundred years. Which oh my. Uh, yes, uh, I I was I was taken aback when I first heard about this. They had such technology to li- live so for long. Well, of course, the rodent physiology is uh, quite well understood and studied, uh, so I can I can see why it would be one of the first creatures to uh, to live for a very long time. Um, quite, quite interesting, I must say. Yeah, uh, the, the records are very very confusing. Sometimes they say it goes by the name of Mickey, and sometimes they say it goes by the name of Walt. Uh, I, I'm not sure Walter for the for the full name. Sorry. Some some say uh, that in in the future when when the mouse finally met his demise it was actually his own self now the 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 texts are a little bit weird about this uh some say that there was a clone made back in the early days and this was frozen and brought back later on some say just his head was cut off and the the mouse's head was uh transplanted into a robot body and uh still lives on to this day of course there is no no evidence for this but uh rumors persist I, I might be wrong in this assumption, but uh, hey, I'm hey, I will to... have no one of my crew speaking in such vagaries. You are right. Carry on. Uh, <laughs> I, I watched an extremely old, only in color documentary, not holographic, nothing like that. Oh, uh, a two D. Oh, yes, two D. <laughs> and they seem to have the capability of time travel. Oh, of course. It was uh, well known that before the universe stretched out to its uh, near infinite size that we have now, that the the ancients used to be able to uh, travel across the the breadth of space time, including through the time dimension. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, and there was this interesting number that kept up popping up. I think it's two point twenty uh, something gigajoules or, or gigawatts. I'm not sure. I seem to. Do you do you know what of, I mean? Uh, of course, I mean I, I I cannot remember the exact number off my off my top of my head. But uh, the the ancient philosopher Doc Brown informed us that uh, if if ever you needed to go through the space time continuum, not only did you need a suitable chariot, something that could withstand the uh, the rigors of the time travel. Um, yeah. I, I, I believe uh, something uh, a, a DeLorean was uh, was mentioned at some point, but these are ancient texts and very hard to uh, to make out. Mm. Um, but yes, yes, uh, doc, uh, great 
great Professor Brown informed us of the exact exact specifications needed to punch through space-time. So, would you think that if we achieve that amount of stored energy, we could do it? Oh, of course. I mean, the as as long as the expansion hasn't pushed the uh, the point in space-time too far beyond us, we should be able to get there. Uh, anyway, Captain, the solar panel field is complete, and we can now connect it to the main network. Oh, wonderful! Oh, oh, let's uh, come up here. I've nearly made finished the uh, ceremonial path all the way around the outside. Okay. There is a network over there. Yeah, I... yeah. I wanted to put uh, long poles in here. Yeah. Um, and the wonderful. solar panel has overtaken steam production, and the steam engines are almost off. Almost. Go on. Wow! Look at that. Oh, that is. That is super, super tasty. So we're taking, we're, we're making 10 megawatts, quite a bit short of the 8 point something gigawatts that we we need for this. Though, though obviously, well, if this is 10, we will need 800? Mm, we can do something like that. 800 of these? <laughs> yeah. Probably. That, that, that seems reasonable. Let's, let's make 800 of these things. <laughs> I guess we can start. Uh, oh yeah, we can. The the benefit of actually building this design is that where are my blueprints? New blueprint, thank you. And just copy the entire thing and let the robots build it. Which uh, unfortunately we haven't quite got the robots built yet. We should definitely work on that. Path is too wide to expand it correctly. Oh no. Oh no, really? Ah, uh, is it like one too wide, two too... Oh, it's, it's very too wide. <laughs> it's very too wide. This is how wide it is. Uh, in that case, I will, from here, rip this up. See, robots? We can do your job as well, I guess. <laughs> we can indeed. But I've got to say, science officer, I feel like we have done a cracking day's work here. Not only have we got such such stupendous amounts of power that it puts our old cat. Uh, old coal plant to shame but we've also automated the production of more stuff to be able to uh, copy and paste this out to use the old parlance and uh, get ourselves the amount of power we need to possibly roll back the space-time continuum and stop ourselves crashing onto this planet well, that's my plan, Captain. I think that's the most optimistic one we have currently. <laughs> it is indeed, but with that, I am going to say Captain's Log signing off <laughs> <laughs>